What's going on guys? So as you can tell by the title, we're going to be going over the top 10 quarterbacks in the 2020 NFL Draft. This is just my personal, li my personal list, my personal rankings. Obviously, everyone has difference in opinions. Everyone has different preferences, different biases. No one's list is going to be exactly the same. This is just how I personally perceive the players and what I personally valuable value when looking for quarterback. And uh, without further ado, let's just get right into it. Kicking it off, number 10, Nathan Rourke, the unsung hero, the guy nobody knows about. But I actually really like Nathan Rourke, even though I only have him at 10. He's actually not a bad quarterback at all. Uh, strengths, obviously accuracy within 20 to 25 yards. He's perfectly, you know, perfectly accurate. Didn't expect someone to be someone as mobile as Nathan Rourke to be as accurate as Nathan Rourke is. Obviously, he, he's nothing special because I have him at number 10 and I have a fifth round grade on him. That's what the number is in the middle, by the way. But to be honest, that fifth round grade is more like a seventh round grade. If Nathan Rourke got drafted, I'd be shocked. He seems like the, the guy who goes to the CFL or the XFL or whatever league they have and never plays in the NFL. If everything turns out right, uh, Josh McCown. That's the type of player he is. Uh, he's just a second or third stringer. You know, maybe he, he'll, he'll be able to do something. If he proves everyone, if he does, you know, proves everyone wrong and does all the right things, puts in a crazy amount of work, the best I can see him becoming is Alex Smith. But yeah, Nathan Rourke, my man. Uh, sorry I had to have you so low, but it is what it is. Moving on to number nine, we have Jalen Hurts. Now, I have a video on Jalen Hurts. If you haven't seen it, what are you doing with your life? Go watch that. Uh, but in a nutshell, what we have here is a great college quarterback who kind of sucks at everything else, <laughs> kind of sucks at what you need to be good at, you know, in the NFL. Uh, I could see him becoming a starter. That's the thing. That's, you know, hence his comparison, Dak Prescott. If he went to one of those teams and something happened to the starting quarterback, I actually don't think he'd be all that bad. I think he'd do pretty good. But, you know, overall, he's a second to third stringer. He's a career backup, and he could just come in every now and then and uh you know be be decent i guess but that basically that video tells you all you need to know um yeah moving on uh number eight we have kellen mond out of texas a m and uh kellen mond is actually amazing um i gotta be honest he, he's just the goat i'm just kidding but he actually did surprise me with how good he was. I didn't expect him to be this good. Uh, strengths, arm talent. Stand, you know, that's the thing that stands out is his arm talent, and uh, he can make some crazy throws. <laughs> I mean, he makes some of the. I, he might make some of the best throws in this entire class. The only other person I've seen make, you know, Kellen Mond type throws is Justin Herbert you know, in this class. Justin Herbert's the only other person who can who can do what Kellen Mond does. Kellen Mond makes some insane throws between like four people on a line, it, you know, on the sideline. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he has a four-leaf clover stuck up his ass or something, but whatever he's doing, he's doing it right. I don't know how he, how he does it. I don't know if he was just on fire those games or something, but uh, next strength, mobility. He's fast. I mean, he's 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 a good athlete. Um, you know, you see his comparison, Colin Kaepernick. If you could get Colin Kaepernick in the what the fifth or sixth or seventh round, you know why not? Uh, he can come in be a, you know this these first three guys are like a tier of second to third string quarterbacks who can who have starter potential. You know, they could they could become a starter one day. Yeah. I mean, that's basically it for Kellen Mond. Um, you know, he can he can 
just provide a spark, honestly. Uh, moving on to the next tier, uh, backup quarterbacks with potential. Um, the next two guys, uh, starting off with number seven, Jacob Eason. I got to be honest, Jacob Eason kind of sucks. Uh, just calling it like I see it, he's kind of terrible. Uh, as you can tell by his strengths, arm strength, size. That's it. That's all he has going for him. <laughs> Everything else he sucks at. Decision making, accuracy, processing speed, manipulation, anticipation, football IQ, reading coverages. Terrible. Everything else. Mobility. Terrible. He's just terrible. Uh, but I have a fourth rate, uh, you know, a fourth round grade on him for a reason is because there's potential there. I mean, he could become John Elway or Dan Marino. How likely that is? Not very, but it's just a possibility. That's the reason I have him as a fourth round quarterback. Uh, to me, he's, he's Christian Hackenberg. Um, you know, he, he's at, at best, he's Jay Cutler. I mean, that's really all there is to say about Jacob Eason. Uh, I'm sorry I had to shit on you, but it is what it is. You kind of suck. Uh, moving on to number six, Anthony Gordon. Uh, that's how I feel about Anthony Gordon. Look, he does he does <laughs> he does the great things great. I don't know what he does the bad things great, and he does the good things bad. There's really no way to describe Anthony Gordon. And, you know, people compare him to Patrick Mahomes. And for good reason. He plays like Patrick Mahomes. Obviously, he's not as talented as Patrick Mahomes, but he plays just like him. Ball placement. You know, he's got great ball placement on, on some of these throws. Off platform, like I said, he likes to fucking just, just throw sidearm and do all kinds of crazy stuff because I guess Patrick Mahomes is his favorite player or something. Uh, quick release, he's got a nice quick release to him, but, uh, the weaknesses, mechanics, he doesn't throw, throw with his entire body, um, decision making, he's gonna throw into five people, <laughs> he's gonna throw into five people and throw a pick, I mean, that's just what he does, he's, he's kind of robotic, honestly, like, if the play says throw to this receiver on this route, He's going to throw it no matter what. It just seems like that's what he does. I think his biggest weakness is the hero ball. Uh, I keep saying it. He wants to be Patrick Mahomes. He wants to stand in the pocket for 50 minutes, roll out, spin back, throw a sidearm no look to the corner of the end zone You know, for a touchdown. That's just what he wants to do, and it's, it's kind of ridiculous. I just don't see it with Anthony Gordon. His highs are as high as anybody in the draft, but his lows, you know, same thing. There's as low as anybody else in the draft. But if he sits behind a veteran quarterback for like two or three years and he just fixes everything um, and everything goes right for him, you know, we have the next Phillip Rivers on our hands. Uh, he has that kind of potential. The thing is, I'm not so sure how likely that is but he's going to be a nice you know a nice backup in in the nfl but that's that's it for the backups with with star but or what did i say with potential now we're now we're going to the next tier these next two guys are starting caliber quarterbacks with star potential and kicking that off at number four Am I counting right? Number five, I think, is Jake Fromm. I mean, what what needs to be said that hasn't already been said about Jake Fromm? He's just, uh, he's average. You know, he's going to execute the offense. He's going to hit your receivers. You're not going to be mad with Jake Fromm as your quarterback, but you might, you know, you're also not going to be happy with it either. The reason why I said star potential is because if you put, if Jake Fromm gets drafted to one of these great teams, great teams like the Patriots or the Saints or the Bills, 
and he comes in right away or maybe he sits but just overall just a good team is what I'm getting at then he can I can see him you know being a very winning quarterback I, I can see Jake Fromm winning a Super Bowl one day because he just does what needs to be done and he doesn't you know he doesn't do anything more he doesn't do anything less and you know I, I have weak uh, game manager in the weaknesses but to be honest it's kind of a you know it's kind of it's not really a weakness it's more of a you know uh, I, don't, I don't even know what to call it uh, it's not really a weakness it's just not something I would draft to you know use a first or second or third round pick on what have we learned today Jake Fromm is average next going to our, what are we at four uh, Jordan Love out of Utah State my personal favorite quarterback in this draft class he's just someone that I want to see put it all together because if he does he can be very special I just love watching Jordan Love play strengths pocket presence moving in the pocket sliding in the pocket stepping up he's great at that he really is a very good pocket passer you know as you can see next he can move a little bit uh throwing on the run you know sometimes it seems like he he throws better on the run than he does you know standing in the pocket you know he, he he's good at throwing off platform on the rollouts and off the boots to throw <laughs> to throw those you need a good arm and jordan love has a good arm good not great a lot of people like to, I think a lot of people overrate his arm strength and overrate his athleticism, but uh, I mean, they're still good. I just think people like to overrate him just a tad. I mean, he's an arm thrower. Uh, he doesn't use his entire body when he throws. So he's he's not gener generating the full power that he could, um, you know, in his arm. But I think the bigger problem is, is he way too often he likes to throw off his back foot or throw off his front foot and it's just terrible <laughs> it, it leads to so many misses it leads to so many overthrows it leads to so many picks it leads to so many just terrible passes and he really needs to just fix that up another thing with his mechanics i mean his footwork i guess you could call it uh is he he has cinder block feet sometimes like he'll just stand in the pocket and not move his feet. It's it's very he looks like Josh Allen in the pocket sometimes where he just stands there and uh when you know when pressure comes he's like oh shit. Now I I, I have to act you know I have to actually throw the ball. I have to set my feet or not set my feet. I have to you know the pressure's coming. I just have to heave it. I can't set my feet. I have to throw it off my back foot or something. It, the footwork messes up and it, it just leads to just chaos. You know, foot, and speaking of center block feet, his footwork is not good either. Um, you know, he, he takes like an extra step or um, he cuts short, cuts, you know, cuts off a step or something. And it's just, it's bad. Decision making. He has a lot of boneheaded plays, a lot of, you know, just stupid picks, uh, stupid fumbles, you know. It's just not good. Like I said, he looks like Josh Allen, uh, the way he, you know, the way he plays. Deshaun Kaiser and Josh Allen are two great comparisons for Jordan Love. Um, I think he needs to go to a good team, sit behind a veteran quarterback, and just take it easy. You know, just learn. You know, because he can look like the best quarterback in the draft. Or he can look like just a middle of the middle of the road kind of guy. Jordan Love, you're my man. I I wish you the best. I hope you do well. Um, I'd love to see you know one of those three teams at the bottom draft him. <clears throat> Patriots. Moving on to our next tier, we have our franchise quarterbacks, and at number three in our franchise quarterback tier. Number three out of ten 
in the top 10 quarterback rankings, we have Joe Burrow. Yes, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow at three, what? Look, Joe Burrow has reached his ceiling. I mean, technically he hasn't, but essentially he has. Look, Joe Burrow is not going to get very much better than what he is right now. And what he is right now is a very accurate, very smart, very fundamentally sound quarterback. Look, Joe Burrow is great. If you're a quarterback away, if that's all, you know, if that's all you need, all you need is a quarterback to be a contender, Joe Burrow is a great pick. You see, I have a second round grade on him, but if the bill, you know, if the Bills traded up, you know, in the top 10 and drafted Joe Burrow, I would say A plus pick, amazing pick, because Joe Burrow is very good. Here's the thing. Like I said, he's not going to get any better than what he is now. And if you draft Joe Burrow and you have a dog shit team, don't expect Joe Burrow to, you know, to be Jesus. Don't expect him to fix your problems because Joe Burrow is not going to fix your problems. He's just going to help your strengths, if that makes sense. What I'm saying is Joe Burrow needs a great team around him. Mechanics, um, he doesn't use... I mean, mechanics and arm strength kind of go hand in hand. He doesn't use his entire body when he throws, so he doesn't get the full, vel- you know, the full velocity. But even if he did, he'd, he'd kind of have a just, you know, a slightly above average arm. Frantic, this is, I mean, this is my biggest knock on him, and it's one of my biggest pet peeves when watching quarterback is when they're frantic in the pocket. Joe Burrow is very, very paranoid in the pocket. He he looks to run way too soon. He look he leaves the pocket way too soon. He's, he's skittish in the pot. He's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. He's just looking around, looking around, jump, you know, happy feet. And um, it'd be one thing if you were frantic and you had uh, four, five, four, six, you know, four, six speed and you could really run. But uh, when you're a pocket passer, I want you to stand in the pocket and uh, deliver. You know what I mean? But that's really about it. I mean, that's all the knocks I can put on Joe Burrow. Other than that, he's he's an amazing quarterback. Comparison, Matt Schaub. Um, look, Matt Schaub's a guy who threw for 5,000 yards. Not 5,000, but he, he was damn close. I think he was like 100 or 200 yards off. Matt Schaub threw for like 4,800 yards and 30 touchdowns one season. And I think Joe Burrow could do that. Look, I mean, go watch Matt Schaub. And he looks just like Joe Burrow. They look like twins. The way they throw the football, the way they move in the pocket, Matt Schaub was a smart and accurate quarterback, and that's what Joe Burrow is. Um, If you're just a quarterback away, like I said, Joe Burrow is your guy. The thing is, there's not a lot of teams that are just a quarterback away. I would pick Joe Burrow if you have a starting foundation. If you don't have a starting foundation, (coughs) Bengals, do not draft Joe Burrow. You're going to regret it. It's going to be like when Josh Rosen went to the Arizona Cardinals. Just a complete dog shit franchise with a complete dog shit offensive line. No receivers, no running back, no nothing. The Bengals are actually better than the Cardinals were, but you get the point. I guess I guess they could start Andy Dalton. You get what I'm saying though. Anyways, Moving on to number two, we have Justin Herbert. Look, everyone knows about his arm strength. Everyone knows about his size. I'm just going to tell you why I would take Justin Herbert over Joe Burrow. And uh, I've kind of already gone over it. Justin Herbert hasn't even touched the surface of what he could be. Um... Justin Herbert can be twice as good as Joe Burrow could ever dream of being. Uh, That's just how gifted he is. And that's why that's why I I personally prefer arm strength and potential over, you know, the floor. Because Justin Herbert 
is not better than Jake Fromm as a quarterback. Right now, Jake Fromm is better than Justin Herbert. The thing is, why would you draft a middling quarterback when you could have someone who could be, you know, perennial? That's my philosophy. Jake Fromm could turn into just, I mean, Jake Fromm could turn into Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow cannot turn into Justin Herbert. Does that make sense? If it doesn't, fuck you. Uh, Weaknesses, pocket presence, terrible. Decision making, terrible. Progressions, terrible. Football IQ, terrible. Comparison, Jameis Winston, because he's going to, you know, he's going to throw a ball into quadruple coverage and throw a pick, but he's also going to throw a 50-yard absolute laser. This is why I would take Justin Herbert over Joe Burrow, because if your team doesn't have anything to start with or not much to start with and you need a quarterback, <clears throat> Bengals, uh, and you can just you know, relax for a couple seasons, let Justin Herbert develop, then, you know, Justin Herbert's going to be going to turn out better than uh, than Joe Burrow would. You know what I mean? Look, these are just my opinions, man. These are just what I think. I'm not saying Justin Herbert is going to have a better career than Joe Burrow because it's likely that he won't. Depending, it all it really all depends what team, you know, these guys go to. That's most that's most of what what it comes down to. A thing that concerns me with Justin Herbert is the fact that he hasn't improved over, what is, what is he, a five-year senior, four-year, whatever. He's a senior, and he's basically been the exact same player for the past three years. That's kind of my biggest concern with Justin Herbert, but, you know, maybe that's coaching or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there's that. Number one. Tua, kind of by a landslide. Uh, he he just has everything. The only the only weakness is the injury history. Um, I don't know if it's if it's fluke or if it's something we should be concerned about. If he's never going to stay healthy, if he's yeah, you know, I don't know. That's that's really my only concern. Obviously, he struggles with disguise coverages, but what quarterback you know what young quarterback doesn't. You know, when I made my Tua video and I said Tua can't save a franchise, but Kyler can, that was really just a poor choice of words. Uh, what I, you know, what I meant by that was he's not, Tua is not built to go to, you know, a crappy team with a crappy O line and crappy, you know, receivers and stuff and, and be, you know, good. But, Kyler could do that because that's his game. His game is to spin around in the backfield, make five people miss, and then run. You know what I mean? That's Kyler's game. That he's better equipped to do that than Tua is. That's 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 all I meant by that. Because you know, if Tua uh, went to the Cardinal, I mean, went to the Dolphins or the Bengals. And they didn't draft O line or anything. He's gonna, you know, he's gonna get his head torn off uh, more than Kyler would. Kyler would still get his head torn off, but it would, you know, wouldn't be as bad because that's, like I said, that's Kyler's game. It's, I'm not saying Tua can't do that. I'm just saying Kyler is built for, you know, running around and just playing backyard football. Um, Tua is better than Kyler. You know, he's way more nuanced. Um, Kyler really just has, he, I mean, he's got better, he's got a better arm and, uh, he can run around better, but everything else, uh, two is way more nuanced and, uh, top 10 grade on him. And that's why, look, that's why I look at, I mean, look at the team fits. Those teams already have like a foundation, you know? I guess if the if the Dolphins want to draft him and sit him, you know I'm not mad at that at all. Or the Bengals, same thing. Um, but I just think he's better suited to go to a team that has a foundation. That's 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 all I was saying. Um, but yeah, that about wraps it up. Um, 
let me know who's too high. Let me know who's too low. Let me know who I left off. Uh, call me an idiot. Uh, Cause that's, you know, that's truly what I am is an idiot. Um, argue with each other in the comments, call each other's names and stuff and bully each other, cyber bully. I'm just kidding. Be uh be civil human beings, but um, you know, I mean, that's really about it. All right. Uh, thank you for watching. 